Okay, so I think I need to <laughs> take the time of this intro to explain who Esther the Wonder Pig is, which is the nice little dressed up pig in the thumbnail for this video. Um, she is a pig who was adopted under the assumption that she was a micro piglet. I don't know what that means, but I guess like a teacup pig, which also does not exist, um, and was adopted by two people named Derek and Steve. Uh, and it turned out there was nothing micro about this pig at all, and she grew to weigh 600 pounds. Um, and yeah, and this is her all dressed up, and it, she she looks beautiful. There we go. Theme song time. <laughs> Alright, so I am your host, Noah Mandau. I've realized that uh, <laughs> I have not given my name since like episode two or three. Uh, and welcome to the National Holidays Podcast. Uh, today is our first, I'm going to call it an after hours <laughs> episode because it's coming out closer to 5.30pm than 5.30am. So you can't spend the whole day planning all the crazy events and um, telling everyone about all the celebrity birthdays that you know are today. Uh, so first off, we've got National Farmer's Day, one of the reasons why it is bad to be a pig, because, well, actually it could be good, I guess farmers take care of their pigs, I imagine, but once it's time to go, it's time to go. Farmer's Day is celebrated every year on October 12th. The profession of farming began around 12,000 years ago with the domestication of livestock as hunters and gatherers settled down and started to plant their own food. In short, farming is one of the oldest jobs around, so let's take a moment to give some love to all the farmers who work tirelessly to feed us year-round, but clearly it's not as old as hunter hunting and gathering, as just mentioned. Um, I don't know what other jobs people had back then in hunter-gatherer times. But yeah, 12,000 BCE, people began to leave their nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle and settled down as farmers. Mid-1600s, the British Ar Agricultural Revolution began due to an unprecedented increase in agricultural production. In 1902, the NFU was founded by tech, or in Texas by 10 family farmers. The union advocated for voting rights for women, fair market access for farmers, and increased cooperative rights. And in 1934, farmers markets began in Los Angeles as a way for farmers and merchants to sell their wares from permanent stalls. So the three Farmer's Day activities that they have here are to go to a farmer's market, to start your own mini farm, and to earn your stripes by getting a farmer's tan. And I think that's funny. I don't know how easy it is to get a tan here in Canada on October 12th, but, you know, if you can find a way to do it and that's really what you want to do, then go for it. Who am I to tell you not to? Uh, so today is also Maha Saptami, which is a Hindu festival uh, celebrated in the Hindu calendar month of Ashwin. Uh, the Maha Puja, great ceremony, starts on this day, and there is a Durga Puja, a Hindu festival that takes place with great fanfare and celebrates the ten-armed goddess and her victory over the evil buffalo demon Mahasura. Maha... Nope. Maha... Mahishasura. There we go. We're, we're going to go with that. Um, if you haven't realized it by now, I'm bad at pronouncing things, let alone <laughs> things that are in another language. Um, yeah, uh, the first record of this was back in the 1500s in West Bengal. Uh, in 1910, a group of expatriate Bengalese organized the first community Durga Puja event in Delhi near Kashmiri Gate. Kashmiri Gate? Uh, in 2015, an 88 feet Durga Puja idol is made in Kolkata, West Bengal, and placed at their Desha Priya Park. I need to stop trying to read these out. Uh, <laughs> I think we just need to move on before I offend anyone. Uh, National Face Your Fears Day. Ooh, wasn't National like Kick Butt Day? Just, just, just happened. Well, if you kicked your butt or <laughs> kicked the butt of a habit. Now you also get to face your fears. There we go. There was a joke there somewhere. I messed it up. We're just going to move on. Um, it's already too late in the day <laughs> to really worry about re-recording things. <laughs> this is what you get. This is the full natural episode. Maybe that's what the uh, the after hours ones will be because I'm just exhausted <laughs> after my day of work. All right. Um, uh, in 1786, the word phobia is first used in the modern sense. From the years 1819 to 1822, the amygdala is discovered by physiologist Carl Frederick Burdach. 
In the 1900s, psychiatrists used terms such as social phobia to refer to extremely shy patients. And in 1980, the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, ADAA, is established. Um, how to observe National Face Your Fear Day is face it, talk about it, and live it. Live it. This day deserves to be celebrated every day of the year, not just on one day. Make a resolution to stop letting your fears control you. Uh, it's also National Free Thought Day, so if you don't agree with that, then you're very welcome to just not face your fears. You don't have to. Have, have your own free thought. Uh, it's an irony that it has taken so long for us to celebrate and raise awareness about something as basic as independent thinking. Yep. Every free and democratic citizen must be allowed to enjoy the freedom of political, educational, and scientific thinking. Yet humans have always been cynical about unique or independent thinkers. Famous persons such as Einstein, Newton, Da Vinci, Galileo, Jesus, and many more were ostracized, penalized, and even executed because the majority did not agree with their way of thinking. National Free Thought Day cultivates an environment of understanding and freedom. Uh, a from 335 to 323 BC, Aristotle composes most of his works in these years. Okay, I read that in a weird way that made it seem like I would give more details, but... Th that's all it says. Oh, whoa. 1692, the Salem witch trials started. Ah, that's that's whack. Uh, okay. Whoa, five facts about Salem witch trials that will blow your mind. Okay, I don't know how free thought just changed into everything in here being about the witch trials, but I'm, I'm down. Number one, the first accused were children. The Sal Salem witch trials started with two girls having unexplainable fits. Oh, boy. Number two, some have admitted to witchcraft. Tatuba was the first to admit to witchcraft at the Salem Witch Trials. First execution of the trials was Bridget Bishop uh, for witchcraft. Uh, number four, animals weren't spared either. During the trials, two dogs were killed, being accused and found guilty of witchcraft. Oh, no. <laughs> Poor puppies. Uh, number five, the victims of the Salem Witch Trials were hanged, not burned, at the gallows. There you go. The more you know. It's also National Gumbo Day. It's a time to appreciate the heavily seasoned savory state dish of Louisiana. Although a gumbo is a perfect bit of indulgence any day, anywhere, gumbo typically consists of strongly flavored stock with meat or shellfish, a thickener, and seasoned vegetables. Ooh. Let's look at some facts. In 1802, American surgeon John Sibley records his comments on gumbo, which is made principally of the ochre into a thick kind of soup and eat with rice. It is the food of of everybody for dinner and supper. Oh, there you go. I don't even think I've ever had it, and I've eaten a lot of dinners and suppers. 1824, Mary Randolph's cookbook, The Virginian Housewife, publishes a gumbo recipe called Gumbo, a West India dish. In 1980s, chef, chef Paul Prud Prudhomme rise to television popularity multiplies the American interest in Creole and Cajun cooking. Ooh. In 1989, fewer than a dozen chefs participate in the inaugural World Championship Gumbo Cook-Off in New Iberia, Louisiana. Cool. Five amazing facts. Internationally, okra is often referred to as ladies' fingers. Wait a second. Did they spell okra differently there and in the other one? They did, unless O-C-H-R-E and O-K-R-A are actually both different words, but I think I pronounced them pretty similar, and they're both involving this, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, time to, wait, yeah, no, time to go on to National Pulled Pork Day. Okay, here's the food that I've eaten. <laughs> Celebrate the classic Texas-style dish on National Pulled Pork Day and bring along your favorite barbecue sauce. In the 1500s, Hernando de Soto, a Spanish explorer, brings hogs over to the New World. Oh, so the pigs at least got to travel a bit before, you know, getting eaten. In the 1600s, English settlers begin to bring hogs to the Carolinas and Virginia, more traveling pigs. And in the 1600s, those dealing with the cheapest, toughest scraps of meat cook the meat slowly for a long period of time, resulting in the tender, fall-off-the-bone meat that we love today. Four reasons we're pulled pork fans. Okay. Uh, number one, pulled pork's among the top ten best-selling meat products. Wow. I don't know how many meat products there are actually but that is impressive I, I think two pork also has more b vitamins iron and zinc than chicken hmm. three in fact there are twice as many pigs as people in denmark <laughs> nice and number four pork is the most consumed meat at the global level interesting i wonder what it is like countrywide because i feel like like chicken is heavily eaten in like some places cows yeah basically it was just gonna restate my thought there but we'll just keep moving along to national savings day so hopefully you haven't spent all your money on pig meat so you have saved something hopefully saving doesn't have to be painful there are lots of easier ways to save in order to bring your dreams within reach 1990s tech combined with lower unemployment fueled a surge in the u.s stock market in July 2010, the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act is a long title for a law designed to, <laughs> to 
to give consumers a fair shake against Wall Street heavyweight corporations. Yeah, we've seen more battles of Wall Street in recent years. Um, 2017, Congress passed a tax bill that slashed income tax rates, doubled the standard deduction, and dispensed with personal exemptions. Five ways to save. Use envelopes. Save loose change. Participate in the employer match program. What's this? That is, if you're lucky enough to work at a company with a 401k. Oh, there you go. Pay your bills with auto pay and unsubscribe from shopping emails. Yes, those emails cost so much. Oh, $5 just for one. World Arthritis Day. This day is designed to raise global awareness about the plurality of arthritis. Yep, it's not just a singular, it is plural. Doctors and well-wishers try to raise awareness through activities and awareness campaigns. Discussions are held regarding the symptoms connected to arthritis and the importance of early diagnosis. In 4500 BC, references to arthritis are found in texts at least as far back as this that time. <laughs> reading like the titles of these and then reading the blurbs that they have underneath sometimes have duplicated words and or like phrases and it just throws me off sometimes. 1, 2, 3 AD, a text dating back to this year, first describes symptoms that appear similar to rheumatoid arthritis, if I'm pronouncing that right. In 1591, French physician Guillaume de Bio, or, yep, yeah, we're going to stick with that, applies the age-old term rheumatism. Is it rheumatism? I feel like it's not pronounced that way. I don't know. To a condition characterized by swelling, stiffness, and pain. Ah, oh, well... One way to <laughs> reduce swelling is by taking ice baths, which I mentioned the other day. And <laughs> I'm currently have my feet in one right now again because it feels really nice. It's a good good idea. That's my tip of the day. Have an ice bath, or at least for your feet, if you're walking around a lot. 1852, Sir Alfred Garrod renames rheumatoid arthritis, defining it as separate from osteoarthritis. Oh, there you go. There's many ways and now moving on to oh we already did that one. Oh, we already did that one too i thought there was one that oh here we go national vermont day the green mountain state is recognized on national vermont day it's the 14th state to join the u.s the state derives its name from french words ver for green and mont for mountain oh that's cool Populated primarily by Abenaki tribes before French and English settlers arrived, Vermont is a densely forested mountain state. Claimed by the French, explorer Samuel de Champlain in 1609 for France, Vermont's first European settlement was established in 1666 at Fort St. Anne. There we go. Interesting, this site has Saint as S-T-E. I wonder if that's like the French way of doing it. Because I would just do it ST. But who knows? The first English settlement was built in 1724. Ah, yes, that was French. It should come as no surprise that Vermont produces more maple syrup than any other state. What? Wait, why is it no surprise? Because, like, is that, I guess, maple trees all over the mountain? Did, did I say that somewhere? I don't know. While Pennsylvania has more covered bridges than any other state, Vermont has more per square mile. More bridges per square mile? Okay, cool. Movie makers love Vermont for its beautiful backdrops, whether it's for eerie thrillers like what lies beneath, a good drama, the cider house rules, or a comedy, me, myself, and Irene, we can't resist the stunning views. I've heard about all those movies, I think, but I have not watched a single of them. So, if it's not too late in the day, maybe go <laughs> go watch one of those movies, get a good view of Vermont. Such stunning landscapes lured the Von Trapp family of Sound of Music. Ah, story to settle in Stow, Stow, Stowey, Vermont, because of the similarities to their alpine home. And along with these majestic views come excellent skiing, hiking, and the most beautiful bursts of autumn color. How nice. And on to our celebrity birthdays for the day. Darcy Lynn Farmer, 17, ventriloquist. That's a first for this podcast. Huh. She has puppets like 80-something Edna Doorknocker, I guess that's the name. <laughs> 80-something. Oh. Diva-esque rabbit Petunia. Oscar the Mouse, and Country Girl Katie. Uh, we have Aisha Hickson, 19, an Instagram star. I don't um, I don't usually know what to say about the Instagram ones. I don't usually <laughs> look anything up. So moving along, Hugh Jackman, 53, movie actor. Wolverine in, well, a bunch of different movies. We've got all the X-Men ones, all the younger X-Men ones, uh, Wolverine Origins, X-Men Origins, and then like Wolverine 2 and... Was there a third Wolverine? Or did it just go to Logan? Well, he was in Logan, too. Um, sorry, Logan as well. There was no Logan, too. Ha ha ha. What a good joke. Uh, he was also the greatest showman in the very completely historically accurate movie with the same name. Uh, and then we go on to just Josh Hutcherson, 29, movie star. 
he was PETA from the Hunger Games. And wait, is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Gale is the one who's like Thor's brother. Because I was like, wait, Hutcherson's. That's not the correct last name. But yes, from the Hunger Games movies. And he was in a show called Future Man. And then we got Kelly Maple, 20, YouTube star. And ooh, okay, a lot of her videos say stuff about reborn babies and toddler collections. I have no idea what that means, nor do I want to. So we're going to just move along to the random Wikipedia stuff. Uh, 539 BC, the army of Cyrus the Great of Persia takes Babylon, ending the Babylonian Empire. Uh, 1810, the citizens of Munich hold the first Oktoberfest. 1960, Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev pounds his shoe on a desk at the United Nations to protest a Philippine, a Philippine assertion. <laughs> Pounding his shoe on the desk. All right. I, I don't know what that did, but there we go. 1558 for our birthday of the day, we got Maximilian III, Archduke of Australia, or Archduke, if you want to pronounce it that way. I don't care. Death. Or oh, okay. <laughs> Going from saying I don't care to just yelling the word death. <laughs> That's an interesting way to go. What I mean is I, I don't mind if you pronounce it either way. I guess I don't care. Sounds kind of rough. Also, he passed away. There we go. In 1618. Uh, today, he is perhaps best remembered for his Baroque archducal hat exhibited in the treasury of the monastery of Klosterneuburg. Okay. And was used for ceremonial purposes as late as 1835. And there you have it. This is our first episode of national holiday podcast after hours so you know have a great night as you continue to stay safe stay gumbo and you'll be hearing back from me tomorrow